Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. Elmer's.com Florocraft, the Dow Chemical Company, Styrofoam brand foam, make it fun. Florocraft.com Styrofoamcrafts.com Travel around the world on this season of Hands-On Crafts for Kids. We're visiting a different country each episode and learning about their culture and traditions through crafts. Every project has five steps and five main ingredients, plus you'll want to keep basic supplies like scissors and markers and toothpicks and even a ruler on hand. Remember, be creative. It's fine to change colors or patterns to make your project your own. So let's learn about different countries with fun craft ideas. Russia is located in northern Eurasia. It is by far the largest country in the world. It also has the world's largest reserves of energy and mineral resources. Many of the traditions are influenced by early Byzantine and Slavic cultures. Our first project is an onion dome, a beautiful example of Russian architecture. Then we make our version of a matryoshka or nesting doll using styrofoam. Then it's time for a Russian folktale and a lacquer box. Finally, create your own fabulous Fabergé style egg with a hidden surprise inside. So let's get started. Our first project is an onion dome. The onion dome is characteristic of Russian Orthodox churches throughout Russia, including St. Basil's Cathedral located in the Red Square in Moscow. The cathedral was commissioned by Ivan the Terrible to commemorate the capture of an enemy. Let's see what we need to make our own. Okay, we need some flour, vinegar, glue, thick tacky glue, baby oil, and some salt, a styrofoam ball, glitter glue, paint pens, craft sticks, toothpicks, some pigment, foil, a cardboard tube, and the tools are some scissors and measuring spoons. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is take your cardboard tube and cover it with craft sticks. We're gonna use the thick tacky glue so our craft sticks don't slide around while we cover it. And you're just gonna line them up side by side. And this is really easy and go all the way around. And I have one finished. Once you're finished gluing the sticks, you can slide a couple rubber bands at each end to hold them in place while they dry, like this. Once you're finished, you can take the rubber bands off and paint it a golden yellow with the paint pen. And you wanna do this until you've covered it evenly and completely. Okay, and we have one right here, all ready to go. Now, the dome is gonna sit on top of this tower, but first thing you need to do is put a toothpick in top of the dome, and this is the beginning of the cross, and then make a foil peak to slide over the toothpick. And that's just gonna sit like so. And then you wanna kinda of scrunch this over top your tower. Okay, now we need to learn how to make the air dry clay so we can cover our dome. I've already started mixing the clay but it doesn't have much color, so I thought I'd show you how to, how to add color. Now, you can find the recipe on the website. It's really easy, and as you can see, most of the ingredients you probably have at home. 
And this recipe is enough to make the whole dome. So the first thing you're gonna do is for the red section, you'll need a three and a half inch ball of clay. For the blue and the green, you only need two inches. So let's make some, the green portion of clay. And you're just gonna start with a ball of clay and then you're gonna make a small little well in the middle. And you don't wanna leave this exposed there because it will start to dry. And so you always wanna keep your extra clay covered. Next, you're gonna add two teaspoons of pigment. right in the middle of your clay. Then, to make it not so crumbly, you need to add some baby oil. Okay, now, so it's not so messy, I like to put my clay in a bag and then knead it until the colors are completely worked in and smooth. And it should look like this when you're done. Okay, so let's get back to the red clay. I've got a lump of red clay. And what you're gonna do is pat some of this out and start covering your styrofoam ball. And you don't need it too thick, but you can start to just work it around the clay. And it kind of smooths out as you go. Again, you don't wanna leave your clay sitting out too long because it will start to get dry. But just pat that in until it smooths out and then cover it entirely. Next, you're gonna use a craft stick to add little notches. Let's take a look at one I already have ready. Now we need to make a base for your onion dome. And we're just gonna use a tuna tin here and cover it with blue clay. I've got my blue clay here. Put this away so it doesn't get dry. And we're just gonna pat out a strip of clay. I'm gonna start with the worm and then start working this around the tuna tin. And if your clay gets dry, you can add a little bit of oil and more if you need it. So work this around and then you can use a large craft stick to make notches in for texture. Take a look at this one I already have ready to go. Okay, now, so our, so our onion dome sits down in, we're gonna put a lump of green clay down in the bottom and then smush this into place. And you can add some ornaments like beads and balls at the top and slide these on. Let's take a look at the finished one. We've added some glitter to the cross and some more glitter around the rim and brushed on glitter over the entire dome. Our next project is a set of owls. Matryoshka dolls, or nested dolls, are the most famous traditional souvenir of Russia. Most are dolls, but owls are another very, very popular design. Here's what you'll need for our set. We're going to use some clear glue. We have three sizes of styrofoam egg, a portion of a paper towel roll, tissue paper, and I'm using four colors for the owls themselves and gold as the background, just uh, various trims, and I'm using gold uh, ribbon and braid. And then our tools. I have a skewer, a paper clip, scissors, a black marker, and a brush. So here's what we need to get started. First of all, if you look down here, I've laid out my pattern in the colors that I'll be cutting each from. I'm going to make three dolls that are identical, and I'm always going to cut the center breast portion, the two large wings, the forehead, the tail wings, and then the eyes. I've actually laid out a couple extra here. Now if you look back here, I've laid them out again. Here's the large breast in for the largest size, the forehead for the large size in blue, a large wing, I'm going to cut two of those in gold, and then on the large one I'm going to need five of those tails, and I'm going to need two of the eyes. So I cut all my pieces out ahead of time and get those all ready. Now it's time to start decorating our first egg. If you can see, I have a scrap piece of styrofoam here. I'm gonna take my smallest size and poke it in. It'll give, make it easy for me to hold. I've taken my palette here and added some of my glue right in, and then I'm just gonna use a sponge brush. I'm gonna sponge onto the egg, then use my brush to pick up 
the tissue paper. The first one is a little bit harder to get on until you've got enough glue on it, but then you're going to layer all the way around until the entire egg is covered. And I've just torn out some little pieces. We've done this technique before on the show where it'll give it a nice hard finish. Once you've got the entire egg covered, you're going to want to set that aside to dry. Now I have one here that's already covered. This is the medium size. As you can see, I didn't use the gold on this. I've used more of a, a cream color that isn't quite as shiny. Maybe you'd like to add some glitter to that later. Now to apply each of the shapes, I'm going to use the same technique. Now the first thing I want to do is add the bottom or the, the breast on this. So I'm going to put some glue. Don't worry if you're putting glue in a place that you're not going to put tissue paper because it's all going to dry clear anyway. So I'm going to lay that on to my surface and just smooth that down and make sure I put a nice thick coat on top of it. Then I'm going to take the forehead, again add some glue, and then let's add our wings. Now I continue building this until I have exactly what I want and add my eyes. Let's add one eye so you can see. And then I'd set that aside to dry too. Let's move the large one in. I have all my pieces and parts put onto this on the front. Now the next step is, is I'm going to take a black marker. This really is going to add some definition. And I'm going to start detailing my owl. Let's add some detail around this side. Some of your lines are going to be a little bit bumpy. In fact, I'm going to lay this down so you can see it a little bit better than standing up because it's not a perfectly smooth surface. Make sure you keep your pen down too because this is a paint marker and the paint is flowing into the tip. And I can go back in and add dotted lines around it. You can follow the design that's on the website or add your own details. Let's do that eye. They really start to come to life when you add this. And a traditional part of the um, Matryoshka dolls is often they have this black eye outline or a very vivid coloration. Okay, let's put eyes. Let's see what else can we add. Let's add some dots on the inside. Now our dolls obviously aren't going to nest, but it has that same spirit of having three different sizes of the exact same design. And we could add other feathers or lines, whatever you'd like. Once you've done as much as you'd like, then you can set that aside to dry as well. Now our last step is to take our paper towel roll. I'm going to just crease it a little bit, cut it off, and then take ribbon or braid, add some glue, and I'm going to use that just from the from the container. Add that around and then use your paper clip to hold it in place until it's dry. That's a perfect holder for your egg. So let's take a look at our finished set. Russian paper mache boxes are made by pressing layers of paper with resins under great pressure. The base is painted black, then the artist hand paints a brightly colored picture. Some of the detail is so fine that a single squirrel hair is used as a brush. The box is then finished with many, many coats of lacquer. We're going to make our version with a paper mache box. So let me show you what we need. We have our paper mache box. I'm using white glue. I have black and white paint. I have opaque paint markers and glitter pens, transfer paper, and then our tools, scissors, pencil, 
and some various sizes of brushes and sponge brushes. So let's get started. Our first step is we're going to paint our box. And I'm going to take my wider brush and I'm going to paint the base of the box black and I'm going to paint the top white. Now the only reason I'm painting it white is to give it a little, make it a little bit easier for me to transfer my pattern. So we continue, paint this entire box on the bottom black and around the base. Don't worry if we get a little bit onto the front. And then I'm going to take a second brush and I'm going to paint the top white. Now remember, this is just a surface for us to do our design on. It is not going to be the finished color. Let's set that one aside because I've got one that's all painted. Now we've got the black bottom, white on top, and I've taken a small piece of transfer paper, like a carbon paper, and then I've taken my pattern. This pattern is right on the website for you, or you can choose to draw your own design too. I'm going to lay that down and then trace the outline with a pencil and by pressing down it's going to show up on my white on the surface. Now I'm going to move to pens and I'm going to start with the horse and fill that in and make it a nice pure white so that it really stands out. I'm going to go over the entire design with my opaque paint markers going right up to that edge. I won't take the time to fill in the whole horse now, but you'll see that it really shows up a lot whiter on the surface. Then I'm going to take my red, add his saddle. You can see how vibrant the color is when you're putting that darker shade on. And before I finish the red, let's put that yellow circle in so that I don't color over it. Do another one yellow, nice and bright, and then color the red around. Now remember, you can go in at any time and add a little bit more detail. And our final red circle here, and another one here. Then it's time to color in that background. To make it easier, what I did is I outlined my horse with a black paint marker just to make sure I didn't get into, I don't get my black paint onto my horse. You can do whichever way is easier for you, but it's quick to just do that outline. Now rather than filling the whole background in with the marker, I'm going to take my black paint and fill in my background a really nice glossy thick acrylic. Now if you make a mistake and for example go right over that dot, don't worry about it, just paint it in. We can always go back in and add another color with your markers later. Now I'd finished painting all the way around the outside edge but I've got one of those completed. So let's put that to the side. Here's my horse, now I've got all the colors on. Now I'm going to add a little bit more detail to my horse. So I'm going to add a neck, we'll add an eye, nose, and then let's add also the green, the grass, circles, and some other details. Just a little bit more design. Now I've kind of got that. Everything's all painted in. Now I'm going to go back with my markers and I'm going to add dots of glitter. But be you know what, before we do that, let's add our lacquer on first. Before then it'll be easier. Now instead of using a real lacquer though, I'm going to add glue. Watch what I do. Don't be afraid when you see what happens when I lay it on. It's going to look white and milky but actually it's going to dry perfectly clear and it's going to give it a really shiny appearance on the top of my box. You can do as many layers as you'd like. Now I'm going to come back and here's one that's already been lacquered and I'm going to add my red glitter. Let me grab that glitter. I can add dots for his mane. 
I can add detail. If you have any spots like that, because it's so heavily lacquered, you'll be able to wipe that off. And then let's take a look at the finished one. I've added some gold all around the gold stars, added a little detail, things to make it shiny, and added a little bit of gold dot even around the edge. And that's our lacquer box. Our last project are Fabergé eggs. The House of Fabergé is a jewelry firm founded in 1842 in Imperial Russia. They produce Fabergé eggs for the Russian Tsars. Most are in miniature. They're usually made of precious metals or stones and decorated with enamel or gemstones. Here's what you'll need. I'm using school glue or white glue. I have a large styrofoam egg, any color of metallic tissue paper, sequins and sequins pins, and a charm. Optionally, we've got some glitter glue and some glitter markers, and then we'll have a little bit of wire, your tools, scissors, sponge brush, a spoon, and plastic knife, and a pencil. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is take our egg and cut it in half. You're going to use a sawing motion to cut through the egg all the way through. And we go all the way through and break that open. I've got one that's already cut. And then what I've done is taken a spoon and scooped out that inside because I want to put a little surprise inside my Fabergé egg. Next, I want to cover the outside and the interior with some uh, tissue paper. I've just torn up my tissue paper into pieces, oh, about one inch or so. And then I've taken my white glue and mixed it one part glue to one part water. You can make it really any consistency. We're just trying to uh, kind of make it, a, dilute the glue just a little bit, just to make it really easy to spread. Then I'm going to take my tissue paper and apply it to the egg. This is very similar to the owls that we did earlier in the show. Don't forget you want to cover the inside and the outside. So I've got two here that are totally covered. You can choose to have the pointed at the top or at the bottom. Next, I'm going to take a piece of paper. I just cut a little piece of scrap, about one inch by two inch, folded it in half, and I'm going to put half on one side of the egg and attach it with pins and just push right into the styrofoam. It was really popular to make ornaments this way with sequins and beads and pins, and they make really pretty decorations. Now you'd secure this with as many pins as you need to make it really nice and secure. Now the next thing I want to do is to add my charm on the inside. I'm just going to loop one piece of charm through a little scrap of about five inches of wire, twist it, twist this top, and stick it into the styrofoam on the inside. Now you can also add a, just a little piece of tape or some heavy glue in there. I'm not going to take the time to do that right now. Next we want to do is decorate. So I'll set this one aside. I'm going to decorate my egg and I'm going to turn mine this way. First thing I want to do is to apply my big gemstone. I'm going to put a large one in the front. Now you could choose to put this all the way around. The design is really your choice. Then I'm taking sequins and sequin pins and I've just poked a little pin through the sequin and I'm going to just push them in to the styrofoam. You can layer your sequins. You can put a design all the way around the bottom. You can choose, you can really choose any design you'd like. You can make starbursts. And this is where that optional, the optional materials come in. If you don't want to use sequins, you can also choose to take your glitter glues and add flowers, petals. You can even choose to put glitter in the center of your gemstones, either way. Then your last option is, is if you'd like, I also noted that you could use some glitter glue on the surface. You may choose to give your entire egg, not where their sequins are, just a little dose more of glitter to make it really nice and shiny. So let's take a look. We have a silver one here that's done with red and, red and teal, and then we also have our gold egg, and that's our Fabergé eggs. Thank you for watching and trying out some of our wonderful Russian crafts. Next time we head to a warmer climate and a fascinating craft tradition in India. Hope you'll join us. 
Projects and ideas from today's show, plus hundreds of other kids' craft projects, are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is Program 1308. A DVD set of all 13 episodes of Hands-On Crafts for Kids, Crafts Around the World, Series 1300, is available for $49.99, plus $6 shipping and handling. Visit craftsforkids.com to order. Travel to distant lands with Hands-On. Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. Elmer's.com Floracraft, the Dow Chemical Company, Styrofoam brand foam, make it fun. Floracraft.com Styrofoamcrafts.com